Here it is. I'm sure you have the wrong building. I'm sure we don't. Who lives here? The Cassinis did. They cashed in City Life for Tuscany. It's been on the market for two months. Are you sure you have the right unit number? KT14C Peking Duck. It's clean as a whistle, right down to the empty waste baskets. Why? What were you expecting to find? How about this girl? Have you ever seen her here before? Yes. She's Mr. Cassini's niece. She's been staying here the last month. Staying here alone? Well, yes. Why? What's... She's not the one who... Oh, dear God. Who told you she was their niece? Their business manager, Mr. Kamen. Jerome Kamen? She's been staying here with his permission. Understand my situation. It was the Cassini's apartment. If they found out, well, you can imagine. Well, right now, my imagination's working overtime. I'm sure it is. Katie came to me. She said she was pregnant. She didn't want to give birth to a drug-addicted baby. I gave her some money and told her to go to a clinic. And the keys to the Cassini place, you just throw those in to cheer her up? She wouldn't go back to rehab. Her mother didn't want her in the house. I wasn't going to let her sleep on the street. Well, <clears throat> that's all very commendable, except for the lies and the cleanup job at the apartment. All I did was pack up her things after I found out she was dead. I have a suitcase right here. As far as we're concerned, that apartment is a scene of a crime. So uh, you don't mind if we conduct a little search there, do you? I have nothing to hide. I was just doing what I thought was best for Katie. Somebody forgot to tell this girl disability money's for food. Gold necklace, Louis Vuitton wallet, including $600 bills. Hmm. None of which sticks around if she was partying with her junkie friends. You know, CSU went through all this stuff in the apartment. Cayman's prints are on everything. Well, he packed her suitcase, and he was showing the apartment. Which means he opens the door and says, look around. But his prints were in the bathroom. They were all over the furniture. Look, he shacks her up in this place, and then he lies about it. I, for one, don't believe in his father Flanagan act. I, for one, am jealous. Divorced middle-aged guy, young single girl. None of which ties him to her death. Yeah, but say Cayman gets an itch. He pops over on Katie, but Katie's OD. If he was afraid of her being found there alive, now he's got a real problem. He owns a car. Maybe he took her out through the garage. Well, even if she left anything behind in the car, we don't have enough for a warrant to search it. Arrest him for hindering. Still doesn't get us a search warrant, unless you arrest him in his car. Are we the only ones who work in the morning or what? Maybe telecommutes. Here we go. You mind stepping out of the car, Mr. Cayman? No, oh, you mind telling me what this is all about? You're under arrest for hindering prosecution. You're kidding. Yeah, it's all a big joke. What about my car? Oh, don't worry. Your car will be secured and inventoried for your protection. I've told you. I was home all night. I had quarterly reports to finish. It's been four hours. You either arraign my client or release him now. I'll pass your sentiments on up the food chain. Oh, I'm running out of stalls, and I don't think he's up for a game of Scrabble. Unless we hear something, we'll have to settle for hindering. Yes. Thanks. That was Logan. The labs came back. They found her vomit in his car. Trace amounts of blood matched her blood type. Which means she was still alive when he took her out of the apartment. And he let her die in a playground instead of taking her to an emergency room. Sure, no doctors, no police, no embarrassing questions. We don't know what his intent was. He could have been taking her to the hospital when she died. For now? We'll charge him with man one. Funny. He smells like murder, too, to me. If we get corroborating evidence on motive, nah, we'll bump it up later. Well, I trust you're here to apologize, Lieutenant. I do my repenting on Sunday. Right now, I'm here to rearrest your client. Jerome Kamen, you're under arrest for the murder of Kathleen Blanchard. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say and do can and will be used.
Docket number 856982, People versus Jerome Kamen. Manslaughter in the first degree, hindering prosecution in the first degree. Give me a plea, Mr. Kamen. Not guilty, Your Honor. Your Honor, even if you accept the people's theory in this case, nothing that Mr. Kamen allegedly did supports this charge. Mr. Kamen transported the victim and left her behind a dumpster in the middle of the night. You can both save it for the trial, Judge. Can we move on to bail, please? People request 500000 Oh, that's ridiculous. My client has two children to support, not including an ex-wife and her attorney. He has less than $60,000 in his savings account. We should all be so fortunate. 150000 cash or bond. That's a good complete lie. She didn't die in my car. She was never even in my car. Oh, settle down. I Jerry. can't listen to this. Jerry, if she wasn't in your car, Mr. Kamen, you'd better explain how her vomit got there without her. Well, we will deal with that, McCoy. But first, I'm curious about motive for all these terrible things you say my client did. He was having an affair with a client's daughter. He was afraid of being compromised. She overdosed. He panicked. That's insane. I kept that girl out of the gutter. Jerry. And no doubt you have evidence of this affair. We'll find the evidence. He stepped in it up to his shorts. I'm sure he left footprints. So there's vomit. That's about the extent of your case. Is that right? Well, then I have bad news for you. Omnibus motion to suppress the evidence from the car and to dismiss the charges. Jerry, let's go. The police knew that they had no grounds for a warrant to search his car. So they decided to wait until they could ambush him in his car and they could conduct what they call this inventory search. It's laughable, Your Honor. Not to the Court of Appeals. People v. Gallic, the need to conduct an inventory of a prisoner's personal effects provides its own rationale for searching those effects. Well, they vacuumed the carpet, Your Honor. What were they doing, an inventory of dust mites? And the officers had the arrest warrant for 16 hours before they decided to pick up my client. How about it, Mr. McCoy? Why the delay? A defendant has no constitutional or statutory right to a speedy arrest. I can cite People v. Bryant on that one. A trial term opinion? Please. Even Mr. Magoo could see right through this. Motion to suppress is granted. Thank you, Your Honor. And since the evidence taken from the car is the sole foundation for the manslaughter charge... Got it. The motion to dismiss is also granted. Mr. McCoy, the next time your police officers try to sneak one past this court, I'm gonna cite them for contempt. There's no excuse, Lieutenant. It was a lousy search. And you tell your detectives that the Bill of Rights isn't a doormat. It was my call. Judge Rodriguez gets birthday cards from the ACLU. Any other judge would have allowed the search. Oh, really? In your opinion? You arrest a man like Jerome Kamen, you make damn sure that your ducks are standing beak to tail. But if it's somebody uptown, we have your permission to cut corners? I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> 